Let's get in the word this morning. Praise God. Want to encourage you. This is a year, guys, where God is going to come and he's going to want you to, to lay yourself before him and go, whatever you want me to do, I will do. I don't care what it is. I'll lay whatever you want me to lay down. I'll pick up whatever you want me to pick up. I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll say whatever you want me to say. Right? So in the series of righteousness, we went back to Genesis. We really looked at when Adam and Eve sinned and they died spiritually. And we saw that they become self-aware, selfishness, self-centeredness. They took on the very nature of, of Satan, right? When people are just like, you know what? I'm just not going to do this. I want to do what I want to do. You're just like Satan. That's exactly the way he acts. And that's why people live in death. If you live your life going, man, all I want to do is what God wants me to do, you're just like Jesus, right? So the whole world system is going to try to press you to be like Satan. All the word is going to try to, from the inside, transform you to be like Jesus, right? So here we are, and now we talked about how that affected them. Then we went into last week, remember 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through verse 21. Man, we learned that Jesus was made to be sin. He bore all of our sin. God literally exchanged Jesus, he gave Jesus so you, can, you and I could know him. And he was made to be sin so that we would be made the very righteousness of Almighty God in Christ. But what we don't focus on is the byproduct of that. Right, Pastor Dave, why, why did Jesus say to his parents, well, what are you talking about? I'm just about my father's business. Why did he say that to them? Because he was righteous. And when you're righteous, that is the predominant thing that you live for. I, I'm just about my father's business. Right? We're going to see this in the word of God. So important that you see it. Because 2 Corinthians chapter 5, if you look at those verses, it says, number one, because we've been made righteous, number one, we've been given God has given you the message or the word of reconciliation. Do you realize as you're sitting here today, you have in your spirit the message from God to the earth? What is reconciliation? It's the message of going into the earth and walking up to people as God leads you and say, say to them, listen, I've got good news for you. Jesus took your place, bore your sin. There was an exchange made, so now you could have life. That sounds so simple, doesn't it? Because we've minimized that in our own lives. Jeanette and I were talking about that this morning. We don't see the power of that. You, you have within you, well, I don't know what to say to people. Just go tell them an exchange has been made. When God gives you a word, like God has given me a word today. And man, there's a grace, there's anointing dripping off of it. The love of God is dripping off of it. And God confirms it. That's the way he'll be with you. But not only in that same passage, not only has he given you the word or the message of reconciliation, he has also placed you into the ministry of, of reconciliation. In other words, you are here in this earth and you are in the ministry of reconciling the world to God. So he's given you that ministry. Wow. You know, God has given me the ministry of pastoring Faith Family Church. And God says to me, hey, he goes, listen, if you'll just delight in me and meditate in my word day and night and if you won't listen stand sit or walk in wrong places if you'll just keep your eyes on me i'll bring everything to maturity 
right? Do I have to know how? No, I don't have to know how. But it'll be a great ride, right? It's the same way with your life. But even further than that, though, not only has he given you the message and placed you into that ministry, what else has he done? He has literally empowered you to be an ambassador for him. In other words, he's empowered you to speak on his behalf the ministry of reconciliation. So as you go to work tomorrow, as you, I, I mean, I'm telling you, as we get into this series, you're going to see, because you can't learn about who you are without being stirred to go tell people, because that's how you're made. As you, as, as this, as, as we get into this, and you'll hear me say some of the same things over and over and over and over, will Pastor Tony ever stop talking about how I've been made righteous through faith apart from works? How many times is he going to say it? As many times as the Holy Spirit prompts me to. Because the more we say it, the more we'll see it. And the more we see it, the more it will impact our lives. See, Christianity, when you walk, it's not alone. I walk by the faith of God. I walk in the strength of God. Right? It's like, it's him and me. Right? All three of him the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm led by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God comforts me, teaches me, strengthens me, comes alongside me and helps me. He's my personal minute-by-minute trainer. My Lord watches over his word that's coming out of my heart through the vehicle of my mouth to perform it in my life, to change the environment. The God of heaven who I've cut covenant with, who Jesus is the guarantee. He guarantees that wherever I go, the Father will leave a fragrance of the knowledge of him. And whatever my foot treads on, that is the kingdom of God. So many Christians have never met themselves yet. That's why we got all this craziness. No, I'm not going to go to church today. I'm just too tired. Okay. Okay. Let's call it for what it is. No, you're not just too tired. You're disobedient. You're rebellious, and you're going to get eaten. Well, I'm just not going to forgive because, you know what? I was hurt. You're rebellious, and you're going to get eaten. Well, I'm just, you know what? Are you kidding me? I am not giving God the first 10% of my income. Well, first of all, you can't give it because it's not yours. Right, But second of all, fine, I just don't have enough money to tithe and honor God. You're rebellious, and you're going to get eaten. And you think, you think that not doing the word, you're still going to get the same results because, you know, you could walk around and go, well, you know, I'm in leadership at my church, and, and, you know, I go there, and, man, Faith Family Church, man, we really teach the word, so I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm good. And I know more than most believers that I come around. But on the inside, inner turmoil, inner turmoil, inner turmoil. Because you're trying to live in a manner that God never designed you to live. The word of God is to be. It is to be your foundation. It is to be the filter that everything coming into your life and everything going out of your life goes through. And if you'll do that, and you can't, you don't have to do that on your own strength. All you got to do is be willing. You will eat the good that all this produces. Amen? So repeat this after me and everybody online too. I love Pastor Tony, right? Okay, now I feel better about myself, so let's get into this. Here we go. Romans chapter 5, look at verse 1 and 2. Isn't God good? He loves us. He's a good father. 
Romans chapter 5, verse 1 says this, therefore, being justified. In the literal Greek, it would read like this, therefore, having been justified. Justified. This is a legal term. It means to be declared righteous, right? But here is the picture of this word. It means all the evidence has been examined and you have been declared once and for all innocent. That's justified. You're innocent. That's why Colossians says you're unaccusable, you're unblameable. Isn't that amazing? So stop blaming yourself. Stop accusing yourself. And when when you mess up, say, Father, I thank you so much that you justified me. You looked at all the evidence. He looked at all. Do you think God's stupid? Nope. He looked at all the evidence. And he said, oh, yeah. They're once and for all innocent. You know why? Because if you were to see the evidence against you, oh, you might come up with some stuff. But if you want to look at, is it really there? It's not there. There's no sin. It's not there anymore. The blood of Jesus erased it. Now, you might have that residual thing in your mind, but all you got to do is renovate your thinking, and God will pull that out. Your past is gone as a Christian. Your past is gone from 8.30 this morning. You know when you left the house and kicked the dog or yelled at your spouse and said, you know, you're a jerk, I'm going to church, right? (laughs) Guess what? Jesus died for that stuff. Isn't that good news? Therefore being, or I'm sorry, having been justified. This happened before you were ever born. Having been justified, how? It says here, by faith. So all you and I had to do to have God the Father look at all the evidence and once and for all declare us innocent, all we had to do is believe that he sent his son and his son took my place. I just got to believe that. And I have faith in that. I have faith that when a shofar is blown in heaven, this trumpet, and it says, come up here, and when I stand before the Lord, I won't shrink back. I won't have any sense of guilt or inferiority when I'm standing before the Holy One of Israel. I'll be just like, wow. And I'll see a greater... I'll see a greater manifestation of who I have really been made because I will see him the way he really is. And there won't be any guilt and shame and condemnation. It will be as if sin never even existed in my life. Isn't that amazing? He's not mad at you today. He might not be pleased with where you are because he's limited on what he can do in your life. Or he's been kind of cut off from doing anything in your life. Have you ever seen a Christian give a testimony? And when they're talking about something good that happened in their life, you could see it in their face. They really were living for themselves and just something good happened in their life. Now, it may have been from God, but it wasn't as a result of them being positioned right. It just happened, something good happened. It's no fun to live like that. It's a lot of fun to live and realize, man, everything, everything good about me, everything good in my life, anything good that would ever happen, it's because of him, right? Because I have made a decision to bow to him and to invite him into my life so now I could live as man was created to live, not separate from God, but with him. I love that. We have access. I've been, therefore, having been justified by faith, what happens now? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith 
into this grace. What is that? The finished work of Christ. This word grace, part of the word means favor. Not only is God pleased with me, but I have favor with him. That's why he says, hey, Tony, all my promises are in Christ, yes, and in Christ, amen. Right? I'll bless the work of your hands. I'll bring everything that you do to maturity. If you, let, if you abide in me and let my words abide in you, Tony, you'll ask whatever you will, and I'll make that happen. Because I have favor. I don't have favor because I did the right thing this morning. I have favor because of what Jesus did for me. It had nothing to do with me. See, a lot of Christians, not only do they not know what they've been born into, they don't even know what they've been born from. You know, my, my wife and I were talking about this morning, and, and, and we were talking about this person that their past, man, did they come out of some crazy stuff. And, and you know, we were talking about how that people think, well, they have such a deep, the depth of their testimony because they came out of that. And now, and they just tell everybody about the Lord and they have so much fruit in their life, but it's because of they have such a good testimony. And listen, I don't care if you were a mafia killer, if you were a serial killer, I don't care if you were the most evil person on the world. I don't care if you were the biggest drug addict. I don't care if you were the biggest alcoholic, if you were whatever, a prostitute or, or whatever, a child molester, all of these things that the world goes, wow. And then you see them now and you're like, they're brand new. Like the pastor of the church in the Mexican state jail that, or prison that I would go minister in, this is back in the 80s early 80s when I was 21. Man, this guy, when I met him, I had never met anybody that just dripped the love of God. And I'm like, so what did you do to get in here for life? And he says, well, I killed eight people with my bare hands. And I'm like, I looked at him and I smiled and through the interpreter I said, you didn't. He goes, exactly, that's who I was and that person's gone. But we don't realize what a testimony we have. Right? I mean, like my wife. Man, she grew up speaking in tongues. She grew up in church. Right? She, kind of lonely, because there were, there, all her Christian, all, every girl in her youth group got, got pregnant out of wedlock. Every, all, you know, she, a lot of people would think, because she's quiet, that she was kind of stuck up, but she wasn't willing to go drinking and go do, so she's just lived for God her whole life. How old were you when Jesus came into your bedroom? Like four? Was it four or five? And that changed her life. I mean, it just, it, she just served God her whole life. And I'm sitting here going, Wow. But you know, she doesn't, have, she doesn't have less of a testimony because she was spiritually dead. And in, in a position, just like all of us, we were dead, guys. We couldn't do anything to ever have God in our lives. We were destined to live on this earth under the tyranny of Satan walking in all the selfishness, self-centeredness, and death that he brings, and then at the end of our physical life, to be lost forever. That, that's, that was our past. I don't care what you've done in your pre-Jesus thing, nothing is as bad as that. And yet God looked at us and loved us so much that he actually had to send his son to die. I mean, think about it, the eternal God on the cross going, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. I'm going to let, I'm a holy God, and I'm going to let all this stuff, I'm going to bear it all. Wow. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? That is your past. That's why when we say you've been made righteous, apart 
for righteous through faith apart from works. Rejoice in that. So we have access by faith into this grace which literally causes us to stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So again, I'm not made righteous by anything that I've done. Right? I've been made righteous by the obedience of Jesus. Boy, that's deep. A sense of a person's own sin and own unworthiness is what causes people to fail to receive from God. It's their own it's their own sense of unworthiness and sin that causes a person to go, I can't lay hold of this. Even if they don't realize it consciously, that subconscious belief will eat their lunch. It's all about who God made me to be, who God made you to be. And Satan, see what he does... We're, we're learning about these things. So what he will do, he'll want to come in and he'll try to confuse you by mixing up the difference between justification, right, and sanctification. And everybody's going, oh, okay. Yeah, that's going to be easy to do because what are you talking about, <laughs> right? He'll try to mix justification with sanctification. You'll understand this. What is sanctification? It's the ongoing, day-by-day -day manner of which you live, your behavior. God wants to separate you in your behavior so you walk like him. But he will try to tell you that justification and sanctification are connected and that so what you do is really who you are. And if you mess up, that's really who you are. And that's a lie. Because justification is not a day-to-day -day manner in which you live. Justification is a one-time event where God looked at all the evidence and, and literally declared you innocent. He declared you righteous. And it happened Back on the cross, Jesus did it. And then when you bowed to his lordship, it took effect in your life. Justification is a one-time event. You're justified. And if you ever walk in a revelation of that, it will affect sanctification. It will affect your behavior. But if you continue to want to just say, I'm just not worthy, I'm just an old wretch saved by grace, you're going to have trouble with sin. And you're going to have trouble with unworthiness. Does that make sense? So let's keep going with this. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 and 2 again. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have what? Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, which causes us to stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So benefit number one, we see here, we have peace with God. This is not talking about the peace of God. That's awesome. We're talking about peace with God. We have peace with God. And when we realize we have peace with God, we will keep his word and then the peace of God will mount guard over our heart and our mind through Christ. But you got to realize you have peace with God before you'll ever partake of the peace of God. Does that make sense? Benefit number two, we always have God's favor on us, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace or into this favor. I have access through faith in my Lord Jesus Christ into this grace or into this favor wherein I stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Benefit number three, we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. That sounds so nice. Oh, we, the, 
the glory of God. What does that mean? That literal, the glory of God is what was manifested in the life of Jesus. Right? In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, right? And then verse 14 of John chapter 1, and the Word was made flesh, took upon himself flesh, and he dwelt among us, and we beheld what? His glory, the glory of, of, of the only begotten Son of God, full, look at this, full of grace, full of truth. The glory of God, the same glory that was manifested in Jesus' life is to be manifested in your life as a righteous child of God. Same glory. The glory of God is his very presence, his very power, his patience, his goodness, his love, and his strength. In other words, when you walk through your life and you know you're righteous, God will be able to manifest his glory through your life. And people will see God through you because you are his body. Isn't that good news? Notice that all three of these benefits have nothing at all to do with how you feel or what you do. It doesn't have anything to do with that. I have favor. Wow. I walk in all this. It has nothing to do with how I feel, which means I don't have to feel anything to walk in it. It has nothing to do with what I do. Isn't that amazing? So the devil's attack, he must get you to a point where you don't believe that you are the righteousness of God in Christ when you sin. He's got to get you to that point, otherwise he can't steal, kill, and destroy in your life. So he will use everything. These demonic forces that are assigned against you, they will throw thoughts in your, in your mind to try to entice you to sin, to try to get your eyes. They hate the fact that you're sitting here this morning. They hate every time you open the word of God or put God first. They hate it because they've got to entice you. They've got to get you to a point to, and they'll throw thoughts. They'll try to bring old friends. They'll create scenarios in your life and use the world system to put pressure on you. To try. It's all designed to separate you from your faith in knowing that you've been made the righteousness of Almighty God. Because if they can make you feel unworthy, they can keep you from laying hold of anything. And in case you think they're powerful, they have no power in your life. Zero power. All a person, all a Christian has to do to get free from anything the enemy would try to place on them, they just have to be willing and obedient. Because the, the enemy can't stay. He can't stay, right? Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Satan will try to get you to doubt and question whether or not the blood of Jesus really got the job done. See, what am I saying? When we talk about righteousness, you got to understand this is not about you. It's about Jesus. Your whole life is about Jesus. You make your whole life about Jesus and not about you, and you will walk in the Zoe life of God. Hallelujah. You must get to a place where you have more faith in what Jesus has done than what you can do to earn his blessing. You have to have more faith in what he's already done than what you could ever do. Right? If, if God the Father were to walk in here right now and he would be looking at you, I'm telling you, for every one of us, he'd be smiling. He would just be smiling. Right? So nice to be with you today. 
What do you mean? I'm here. And my focus, yes, I'm the creator of everything. I'm holding everything together. But my focus is on you. What do you need? Let go of that stuff. My son paid for it. Pick this up. Right? You must be a believer in Jesus making you righteous apart from your works. You have to be. This is how to manifest all that God's grace has made available for you. It's only able to manifest if you are a believer that realizes that I've been made righteous apart from my works. And there's nothing that I could ever do to change the fact that I'm righteous. If you can, if you can get revelation of that, then all the things that God's provided to you by his grace you have access to. So do you believe, do you really believe that you are the righteousness of Almighty God in Christ? you got to believe that. Do you believe what the blood of Jesus Christ has provided for you? Do you accept the fact that your sins have been erased past, present, and future? Oh, you got to realize that. We have to renew our mind to this. It's not enough to mentally assent to it. This becomes a central, a central thing. That's, it, 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 I think about this all the time. I declare these things all the time. Your spirit totally knows everything I said is absolutely true. But that's not enough. See, God has actually written this on your heart. You're sitting here today, God's written this on your heart. Your spirit gets it. But you've heard me say this before, but spiritual growth only happens when you align your soulish realm, your mind, your will, and your emotions with what you already know to be true in your spirit. You must renew your mind to this. When I say renew your mind, that means you must align your mind, your soulish realm, your mind, your will, and your emotions. You've got to align that with what you already know to be true. And see, this is what messes people up. Because your spirit gets it. Your spirit's like, yeah, I know every good and perfect gift comes from above. I know that God is my healer. I know that in my spirit. But man, it's not making any sense why that healing won't manifest in my body. You haven't renewed your mind to this yet. Because when you renew your mind, you're not waiting to be healed. You're like, oh, wait, oh, I am healed. Sickness, you got to go. That's, and, and, you'll, and you won't move from that. See, there's that little, that little uh, mathematical equation that, uh, that's really a spiritual equation that we've talked about. We talk about it a lot here. You have to gain revelation knowledge of his word and renew your mind to the word of God. You have to align your mind with what your spirit already knows. You do that as you meditate in the word of God and now the Holy Spirit opens up his word on the inside of you and now your spirit gets it. And that only happens by you meditating in the word. What does that mean? I say it over and over and over and over. There are scriptures that the Holy Spirit will prompt you, not 20 two or three that you say over and over and over like like Psalm 37 4 is a great example for me I read that one time and it, it jumped off the page slapped me in the face several times and I'm like okay I got to delight in the Lord so he could give me the desires of my heart and I'm sitting here going I have no idea what it means to delight in the Lord so what did I do father I thank you over a year father I thank you that I delight in you and I position myself for you to give me the desires of your heart. Lord, that word delight, 
Lord, you are the source of my joy, pleasure, and satisfaction. And I'm sitting here going, what I'm saying is not true. I'm satisfied with worldly things and I'm my joy, right? But I kept saying it and I kept saying it. And pretty soon, because what, what the reality was in my heart is my spirit's going, yep, absolutely. My mind's going, ah, oh, but you know you desire to do this and that and you, you fail over here, right? You just keep saying it. And all of a sudden one day I'm like, wow. Now, even thinking about that, it comes out of my spirit. You are the source of my joy, my pleasure, and my satisfaction. What happened there? My, my soulish realm was aligned with something that I knew to be true, and I grew spiritually to where now I can take thoughts captive that come and say something else. I, I'm not looking at my behavior. I'm looking at him, so now it fixes my behavior. This is what we're talking about. You have to know. When you know and you gain revelation knowledge, you're able to reckon. Reckon is a, a mathematical term. You get your answer. When I know that Jesus himself bore this sickness that's attached itself to my body, when I gain revelation knowledge of that and I reckon the fact that, wait a minute, if Jesus bore it, here's the equation. If Jesus bore it, then I don't have to bear it. So it has no legal right. It's got to leave my body. Oh, so I knew something, and now I reckoned it, and I'm like, wow, now I can yield to it. And I could not be moved by the way I feel or circumstances or, or situations. And through faith and patience, I will receive the promise. Because I'm not trying to be healed. I am healed. Yeah, but what's going on? Your blood work doesn't say you're healed. I don't care. Hide and watch. My blood work will declare that I'm healed. Because, see, I've now I finally yielded. I can yield to that now. See, so many Christians are trying to do better. They're trying to yield. I'm just going to, I'm going to really try to stop looking at pornography. I'm going to really try to start talking better. I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to try to, I got to stop lying. I keep trying to, but I, then I talk to somebody and I tell these, I tell a lie and, and I don't even, it's stupid. I don't even have to, right? I just, I just got to try harder. No, no. You just got to gain revelation knowledge of the word so that the word will give you the answer. And once that light goes on, now you could yield. You could yield to him. So listen, don't get down on each other if you see your brothers and sisters not yielding. Right? Pray Ephesians 1 for them. Lord, give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you so that they would know the hope of your calling, God's will for their life, that they would know the incredible power that's pointed at them as they believe the word of God, that they would know the incredible inheritance that they have been given by you. And then when you talk to them, you don't correct them. You encourage them. You are a strong man of God. You are a world overcomer. You are the healed. Right? Because now our words minister grace to each other. And when your brother or sister says something stupid to you and stings you a little bit, listen, when you walk with Jesus, you will have the skin of a rhinoceros. And you're just like, no big deal. I'm just going to forgive. Right? Right? Just live like I do. If somebody doesn't like me or does something, listen, they just don't have enough information yet. <laughs> this is what's so important. So let's go on a little bit. Do you believe that you're righteous even when you don't do righteous acts? Yeah. You have to believe that. Because when you believe that, you'll, you'll sit there and go, you know what, that's not even who I am. I'm not living in this lower life anymore. I'm not going to live like the enemy. If you will continue to believe and stay established in your righteousness, 
then you will be empowered by God to change what you did so that you could walk holy and walk free from this unrighteous or sinful behavior. If you'll just stay, I have been made the righteousness of Almighty God. Don't focus on I can't do this anymore because you'll do it. Focus on I have been made righteous because when you gain that revelation, power is released from God to help you walk free. And all of a sudden when you get free, you're like, wait a minute. That's, it's almost like that was somebody else because that doesn't even bother me anymore. The reality of it is, is what is going on on the outside now is the same thing that was going on all the time on the inside. Your spirit wants nothing to do with it. But now you've just aligned your soulish realm, which contacts this physical world, with that truth, and, and, and your behavior changes. Oh, Satan does not want you to know that. We try to do works that our righteousness will empower us to do. You're righteous. You have access to divine, supernatural power. Don't try to work for something. Let the power of God empower you to do it. I'm telling you, you'll get to the point where if you're not empowered to do it, you won't have anything to do with it. Because it's so much easier, it's so much better. It's just, it's toil and stress-free. It's a rest. God did not make you toil, stress. And I'm telling you, we face more stress by far than any other generation of, of the church. We also walk in more we have access to more knowledge of the word of God, more anointing. All these great men and women of God, you know, that went home to be with the Lord? Do you know their anointing didn't go to heaven with them? They have no need for it there. It's all on the earth. Right? I, I remember when our pastor, remember when Pastor Mike laid hands? Because Brother Hagen laid hands on him and said, I need to impart what God has given me. I, I need to give it to you because I'm not always going to be here. And man, when Pastor Mike did that for me, wow, I felt absolutely nothing. <laughs> when Pastor Hagen laid hands on me, I was sure I was going to look to ordain me. I was sure, you know, everybody's fallen. There's thousands of people there, and I'm like, you know, Lord, I, oh, here we go. Just like so many times, I'm the only guy standing up. <laughs> right? I've been talking about the anointing increasing in my life. And you know, I know that, man, Brother Hagen, Pastor Hagen has had a lot of people that went home to be with the Lord that have laid hands on him. I've had ministers come up to me and go, let me lay hands on you because I, I was imparted this and I want to impart this unto you. I'm like, yeah, give it to me. Man, I need it, right? Now, that anointing won't work if I'm not faithful. But if I walk around going, I'm the righteousness of Almighty God in Christ, it just, it just, it'll all, it just, that power just works. But you could be sitting here saying, but nobody's ever laid hands on me. Oh, I beg to differ. How many of you have ever received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Do you know that's a lot better than Brother Hagen, Pastor Mike, right? Because he is the anointing. And when you invite him in, man, so you have it. Satan doesn't want you to know. This, is all, this whole series is about you finding out that it's not about you, it's all about him, and that makes for a great life. There, we can go home now, right? No, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Hallelujah. A righteousness consciousness, being conscious of my righteousness, it enables me to experience the manifested blessings of God's grace. Being conscious of my righteousness 
literally empowers me to believe in the finished work of Jesus as it pertains to me. So God imparts his grace in us. And as the blessing of God, which has been given to us by God, begins to manifest in our lives, people will see the very glory of God. This is why it's important for you to lay hold of everything. This is why it's important for you when you're sick to lay hold of healing. Because when that healing manifests in your body, guess what people see? The glory of God. It's important when you're in lack that you lay hold of abundance. Because when people see it, they're going to see, they're going to experience the glory of God. And it's going to affect them. When a person sees you walk free from depression and anxiety and fear and start to manifest faith and, and just no fear and power and strength, it manifests the glory of God. It's time, it's time for you and I to walk in, to wear, and to show our righteousness on the outside. That's why we're teaching this. It's time. Boy, is it time. Don't get... We... <laughs> Have you ever noticed when you're trying to hear from God on something that when you finally, quote, hear from God, you knew it all the time? Right? I've seen people deal with this. I saw it, I really started seeing it in Mount Pleasant, Iowa when I was a discipleship pastor. People would come to our church and it was like they were walking out of the Sahara Desert and they're just like, I'm in heaven. And then I would talk to them, I'm like, well, okay, so you're looking for a church, so just take all the pressure off yourself. As I'm saying this, I probably said this to a lot of you. Take all the pressure off yourself. Don't try to plant yourself. God, God will lead you on what to do. And I've seen people I've, we've seen people come here and you're just, you could tell, man, everything about this is hitting right where they're supposed to be. But man, what's, what's going to happen to my church if I leave? You know, I'm part of this other church and I, you know, I'm, I'm just drying up spiritually because I'm never hearing anything. And, but I, but, but I, you know, I help there. If you want to know how much God, how much that that place is going to miss you, then get a bucket of water and stick your hand in it. And when you pull your hand out, the impression that is made, if there's an impression, that's how much they're going to miss you. <laughs> if I ever stop preaching the word of God and allowing the spirit of God to move and not walk in the love of God, don't, please, love me, pray for me, but don't walk, run. Run. Run and go find a place where the word is going to equip you. If there's a source of frustration in your life, listen, God, the word will show you where you are and the word will show you where you need to go. Don't, don't spend a lot of time trying to figure this out. Don't get the pad of paper and go, okay, okay, they've got great children's ministry, but I don't like this. You know, Pastor Tony doesn't wear skinny jeans, so I'm not so sure about that, <laughs> you know. And if I ever do, I had one guy in our church, he came out of a church that the pastor did a commercial, and he was running with no shirt on a treadmill. And he was in really good shape, right? And, and, and the guy came up to me and said, if you ever do that, I'm going to slap you. I'm like, please slap me. <laughs> right? I do have a six-pack. It's insulated, okay? But I'm working on that. The insulation is getting thinner. We love the there we go. Boom. I will receive that. You and I are finally going to walk in our healing. You're going to walk and do all that God wants you to do in your career, at your job 
you're going to have the marriage that you, that you desire. You're going to see the relationships with your kids if they're not restored, restored. If you're single, God has the perfect person for you. He will give you all the desires of your heart and it all gets back to you knowing that you've been made righteous because when you know you've been made righteous, you know he would not withhold any good gift from you. And all those things that are desires of your heart that you sit there and take energy going, well, is my motive right? Yes, yes, it's right. The only thing about it is you probably don't see how good it's going to be, right? The central theme of the New Testament is I am the righteousness of Almighty God in Christ. If you don't understand that, you won't understand any of the epistles. Wow. So here is the message, here is the good news that you could take to the streets and you could say it to people who are not born again. I don't care if they know what the word righteous is. Doesn't matter. Because here's the thing. When you give this simple message, it's going to take the Holy Spirit to wake up their conscience so that they know they need Jesus. Guys, I have seen New Age professor, doctors, uh, uh, in teaching in a New Age school, atheists change in a moment of time. To all of a sudden, I don't believe there's a God. To two minutes later, Jesus, come into my heart. Right? I've seen it. Because see, people, and, and there's going to be a lot of people that will reject the message. Okay. We're not, it's not my job to, to I can't make you drink this Kool-Aid, right? I can't make you drink it. I can show you, and the Holy Spirit will woo you, and even if you reject it, go ahead and reject it, brother. When I leave, guess what? That word will never, never, ever leave you and go back. And it might be 10 years. You're going to have people come up to you in heaven, and they're going to go, thank you. Man, sorry I was so rude to you that night. Right? I mean, I've had people slap me in the face. I almost think that's hilarious. It hurts a little bit. <laughs> but you know, I've been punched in the face and slapped, really mostly punched so much, I've created some calluses here, right? But when somebody gets that mad, you're going, oh yeah, <laughs> your days are numbered. God must be really all over you because you're trying to run from him, right? Don't tell me about that, Jesus. Okay. I'm telling you, when you're righteous, things happen. So I'm going to close with this. When I said this, it's the central theme. So righteousness is used 83 times in the New Testament letters to the churches. In Paul's letters, which is you know outside the gospel, 77 of the 83 times. It's the central theme, it's the foundation of Paul's gospel, which he received from Jesus. Righteousness is the key word to the revelation which the Apostle Paul received from Jesus. I must receive that I have been made the righteousness of Almighty God in Christ. I must receive this truth that positionally everything changed for me now. Positionally, I have been seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers, all of this. I have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ. I have been given everything. So I'm going to close with this verse. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17 says this. It says, for if, and that's a little weak, you could translate this Greek word, since, by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Talking about Adam's sin caused death to reign in this earth. 
much more. And this Greek phrase, much more, means so much more it can't even be compared. Much more, they which receive, what? The abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. You and I are to... See, this is the other thing. As you gain revelation knowledge, as you renew your mind to these things, it will cause you to reign in life. What does that mean? This Greek word means to exercise authority. When The more that you realize you've been made righteous, the more you will exercise your authority. Satan, I bind you. You get out of my life. Body, leg, knee, blood, you come in line with the word of God in the name of Jesus. Does that make sense? This is what happens. This word means to operate in the earth as the God of this earth. What does that mean? You walk like Jesus. Are you the God? Are you a God? No. You're his child. And here's the thing. As you walk in the earth, God works through you. So he's working. You reign in life. Isn't that good news?